most delightfully fascinating character in the realms of mystery, Charlie Chan. investigation of the murder of Ellen Landini at Pine View has come to a dramatic impasse. Charlie Chan and the sheriff, young Don Holt, were about to arrest Dr. Swan, ex-husband of Landini, when, in the unoccupied house at the edge of Pine View, they discovered Swan's dead body. Suspicion again points to everyone, as in the past. Ward, Ryder, and Romano, three living ex-husbands of Landini, Leslie Beaton and her brother Hugh, Ireland, Landini's pilot, and Aja Da Singh, Chinese servant at Pine View, whose activities the night of the murder are open to grave suspicion. But now, in the empty house by the yellowish gleam of the Honolulu detective's flashlight, the sheriff and Charlie Chan kneel beside Swan's body. Yeah, Swan, all right. Must have been killed instantly. Well, exit Swan from this murder case. I wonder what it means. It means, I believe, that the blackmailer has met with obvious finish. Yeah, but it kind of upsets our calculations. Yeah, we were all ready to arrest him for the murder of Landini, and doggone if he doesn't go and get killed himself. Shows that we were all wet. Not exactly, Sheriff. If facts be analyzed, they tend in directions of proving that we were very close to edge of being right. Well, I'm sure glad to know that we were near right. Permit me to what the French call reconstruct murder of Landini. I'm listening. Night of murder, Swan hovering in hall waiting to go to study to have last word with former wife. He accidentally is witness of killer, if not of killing. Suppose he learned who killed her. Would such man go to police? I think not. He sees instead new delightful pathway of blackmail opening before his dazzled eyes. Sounds reasonable, all right. I think it happened so. Suppose then that he comes down here tonight to receive first installment of his wickedly earned money and receives instead bullets from desperate person who cannot pay or who, knowing that demands will be endless, will not pay. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happened, all right. Yes. From murderer's point of view, that would be wiser cost. I cannot truthfully say that I disagree, cannot altogether say that I regret untimely passing Dr. Swan. Neither do I. I never did like him. And a blackmailer. Now the world's better off without him. By the way, what started you off to come down here? In process of removing clothes, I heard back door close. I followed footprints in snow. Back door? Yes. And I followed footprints from front door. One of us followed murderer, the other followed Swan. Uh, quickly, Sheriff, we must go. We are again guilty of carelessness. I don't get you, Inspector. Uh, quickly, a little kukua. Kukua? little kukua help to open this window. While we engage in death struggle in hallway, murderer was standing, listening, watching, perhaps. He slipped through our fingers and... Ah. Not very big jump to bank, as you said. Come, I shall hold flashlight. Okay. Yes, my friend, if you follow murderer then I followed Swan or vice versa. Uh, let us place large order for sackcloth and ashes. You and I, my boy, walked within few feet of murderer 
we so hotly seek. Yeah, and he's got a fine start on us, too. Man inclined to exercise would not have to look further for a nice pair of dumbbells. <laughs> Pardon vile slang which I acquire from my children now being beautifully educated in American schools. Come, we must search for returning footprints. Now, yeah, there they are. It'll have to be a quick job. It's starting to rain. Uh, spring coming, and I can't get overjoyed at the prospects at all. This spring will be happy one for you, nevertheless. Look, Sheriff. Footprints. They do not go to roadway, they go to... To the edge of the lake. Yep, and they disappear. That fellow must have had a boat. Sorry to be in disagreement, Sheriff. Murderer, no matter how powerful, could not carry boat on back. Not boat which would stay afloat in waters of such turmoil as these tonight. No. Submit rather that he went into water and walked along edge of shore. Then you go one way and I'll go the other. We'll find out where he stepped back onto the shore. Afraid not, Sheriff. Murderer has too much start. <laughs> Besides, my somewhat ample girth precludes such lengthy walks in water. No, afraid not. It seemed like the only chance. Do not worry. There will be other chances. No matter how often the fox returned to his den... After raiding chicken coop, in the end, he is killed by watchful farmer. Our murderer has now two crimes dogging the footsteps of his conscience. We shall win. But I... I don't see a starting point at all, Inspector. We're just as far from a solution as ever. And another murder to solve to boot. But we do have starting points. Where? I can't see it. We are dealing with murdered man who was blackmailer? Yes, then in order to pursue his nefarious trade, it is necessary to have person worth blackmailing? Oh, I get you. Had to be someone with enough money to make it worthwhile. Most assuredly. Otherwise, Swan would have reported murder. This is always predicated upon thought that our theory is correct one. Here we are at Pine View. Hope the murderer did not lock the door behind him when he returned to house. He didn't. The door is open. Quietly now. I open bedroom doors as we go to study. Quick flash of light to see whether or not any awake. Our murderer has had plenty of time to get into bed and pretend to be asleep. Unfortunately, yes. Quietly. Who's that? Mr. Ryder, awake? Yes, I'm awake. It's very late, Mr. Ryder. Or early, perhaps, is more correct. I know perfectly well what time it is. I've been awake for an hour. What's the idea of scaring the wits out of everybody this way? What do you mean, Mr. Ryder? You, Holt, leaving the house in the middle of the night. So sorry, Mr. Ryder. But detective is not in control of sleeping hours. Well, does a detective's job call for leaving the doors open so that the wind about blows the house inside out? What door, Mr. Ryder? The front door. I closed the front door. Mr. Ryder... Will you join Sheriff and me in study? You'll have plenty of company there without me. Precisely what do you mean, Mr. Ryder? You'll find Miss Beaton, Romano, and all Singh shivering in their boots, scared to death. I do not insist that you join us, Mr. Ryder. Good night. Thank you so much. When entering study, Sheriff, look for signs of wet feet. Don't worry, Inspector. I will. I observe from light the study door is open. Oh, John! Sheriff, I... We... We wondered what on earth had happened. I should have said so. In Inspector Chen, before I tell you tonight that some things have happened in this house. Yes, Mr. Romano. And what has happened? Oh, Miss Beaton, sit down and decide the fire. There's yes. nothing. Yes, Mr. Romano. What has happened? You ask me what to happen. I am awake when the bedroom door burst open. I get out of a bed. I admit I am a scare. I light a light. I find Mr. Ryder in the hall. Miss Beaton also. We go together down the stairs and find the front door open. Mr. Ryder, he goes to your room. No Inspector Chan. Then we go sheriff room. No sheriff. Ah Singh, you have said nothing. Tell me, Ah Singh, how did you get your feet wet? Well, what's the matter? May catch my feet wet outside. What do you think? Obviously, Ah Singh, you get your feet wet outside. But what were you doing outside? I want to make go outside, look, see where a man who leave front door open and go to. A plenty of snow outside. I think go around the house, uh, get some feet plenty wet. Right, so I think. Yeah. Plenty wet feet, got. 
you will all have to be told sooner or later. We, Sheriff and I, have been down roadway to unoccupied house adjoining Pine View. We found Dr. Swan murdered. Oh! Oh, I knew something was going to happen. I felt it. What did I say? It is not safe to keep us here in this house with a murderer ready to kill us one by one. Ah, uh, hi, hi. What I say before? Policeman come, put this on, work for policeman, he come to. Or oh, more better, I go tell him, Bossy, light away quick. Mr. Ward, he has returned from Reno? Oh, sure, sure. Bossy, he come back a little while ago. Oh, may think maybe he leave a front door open. I speak to him, he say, no. He fix him good when he come in. There is no need to disturb him now, I think. He's probably tired. And waking him will not help solve murder to Dr. Swan. Please do not worry. From now on, sheriff or self will mount rigid guard upon all staying in this house. Better to make arrangements to get us all away from this place. Not one of our lives is a safe. And you, Inspector Chen, the closer you come to finding murder, the more chance there is of your being another of his victims. Yes, and you too, Sheriff. No, no, don't say it. Don't even think of it. Come, come, Miss Peaton. Leslie, Romano's making things out worse than they are. I agree with Sheriff. Better that you all go back to bed. One word with you, Sheriff, before you go. Yes, Inspector. What is it? Our first duty tomorrow morning. This morning. For I see it is almost daylight. It's to find out who had key to empty house. That person is murderer. After the night's adventures, we feel that both Leslie Beaton and Romano have some justification for their fears. Will Inspector Chan be able to find who had the key to the empty house? Only time will tell. After your sponsor has delivered his message, Inspector Chan will be with us again. Inspector, what do you have for us this evening? Untimely death of Dr. Swan is still uppermost in my mind, Mr. Wilson. Naturally. You have something along the lines of that thought? Yes, Mr. Wilson. Animal that lives in cave and only ventures forth to prey upon sheep in valley cannot expect help of sheep herders when attacked by larger animals desirous of possessing said cave. So with criminal who goes against laws of society. He cannot expect society's protection when at the last he desires things. Thank you, Inspector Chan. And good night. <laughs>